865 is on the road here in Las Vegas at Oracle AI World 2025. And yes, make no mistake, there was a ton of AI content here. We're looking at advanced infrastructure, we're looking at agents, we're looking at enterprise SaaS infused by AI features that are built into the products themselves without an extra charge. Uh, and of course, my, one of my favorite topics, this actually combines the two, and it's multi-cloud. 10 years ago, uh, my company went out on a limb and said, multi-cloud is going to be the future. Why? Because this is just what enterprises want. People call this cloud deniers. No, we weren't. I used to work in the cloud business. I wasn't denying anything, but it just made sense. And one of the companies, one of the first companies to really lean into this uh, was Oracle in a variety of ways, whether it's multi-cloud networking, but most important, multi-cloud databases. And here we sit, uh, Oracle databases are sitting inside of every major hyperscaler out there, giving the customer choice on where they want to deploy uh, Oracle uh, database. And to talk about this, some announcements here at the event, Nathan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. First time on the pod, this is great. It allowed me to do my victory lap on multi-cloud. Thank you for being in the insightful company here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're very excited to see multi-cloud turn from something I think customers understood was happening to right. something that the actual cloud vendors are working together to make a reality. So our partners, Google, Azure, uh, AWS are all working with us to make sure that those database products are well integrated in their environments yeah. and customers are getting real value from that. It's very exciting. Yeah, so you have multiple regions, yeah. 38 regions in fact, that are live across uh, the big hyperscalers, including yourself. Yeah. Uh, so I include that uh, in four. 34 more planned yeah. uh, for the next uh, 12 months. Mm -hmm. Why the acceleration? Why the yeah. investment here? Yeah. So the real value of the multi-cloud products, the database app products with these vendors, is that it puts that Exadata hardware sitting inside of a child site at those CSP locations, very low latency connectivity yes. into those applications that customers are building inside of those uh, uh, partner uh, cloud ecosystems that has to have that database in the regions the customers are operating in. You know, that means that we've got to go and support a wide range of them. So it's the single biggest thing our customers need moving forward is to make sure that those database products are living right next to where their applications are inside those clouds. Yeah, I, I have to admit, uh, when I saw when you know, Larry Ellison did the first announcement, mm -hmm. uh, I was watching on video and the notion, it's one thing to put software into somebody's mm -hmm. cloud. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies do that, yeah. but to put a piece of infrastructure yes. uh, into somebody else's cloud had really never mm -hmm. happened before. Yeah. And there were a lot of people that didn't fully understand the gravity uh, of that, I kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, okay, Oracle has one. Mm -hmm. Oracle database has one, and I know there's a lot of databases, and you know, what, what is winning, but it was, it, was, it, was, it was a huge deal, mm -hmm. and now you're even making it bigger. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I also cited when you did this was, well, wait a second. If you buy in that the average large enterprise has 2.8 uh, cloud vendors, mm -hmm. by the way, that the 0.8 yeah. averages, of course, of course. Uh, where do I put my investment, right? It's like, I, 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 maybe I misjudged forecast of how much I wanted to put into AWS. Mm. But what you announced here were multi-cloud credits. Mm -hmm. Tell me how, how this works. Yeah, so multi-cloud universal credits are a simplification mechanism for customers. So it means that they can do a contract with Oracle, just one, and it <laughs> means that they can actually have a single aggregated commit across all of the different vendors they're working with. And so from the customer's perspective, this was obvious. That is, I'm buying database, why am I doing separate agreements, right? Right. And so this really kind of makes that a reality for them. So they can now take those credits and then use them as they see fit, as their growth happens across all of the different customer, uh, cloud vendors that they work with. Yeah, it's so funny. Some of the things that, that seem so, well, of course, mm -hmm. but it's actually, what you're doing on the back end is actually quite complex. Mm -hmm. So, but the customers are, are just like, okay, well, you know, I, 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 first of all, I don't want to do all these, these agreements, and oh my gosh, uh, I under forecasted this CSP, I over forecasted this, and I, of course I can slosh those credits right. uh, in here. So, 
what you've done uh, seems very simple, but I know because I used to have a real job mm, is, is yes. actually quite uh, yeah. challenging here. Yeah. Well, we've kind of feel like it's in that category of things where the more complicated a problem is for a customer to solve, the more value it is if we can solve it for them. And so that effort is real, but it's definitely the right thing to help that customer. Yeah. Um, a lot of a sign of growth. I mean, you can have a direct sales force that directly sells things, mm. but to truly scale, you need that you need channel yeah. and you need partners. And mm. it's a combination of GSIs, uh, so maybe some specialty uh, type of, uh, of partners out there. Mm -hmm. How are you rolling out this capability? Uh, you know, let's say with your partner program or something like that. Yeah, so we just announced our extension of our partner capabilities for resellers in our uh, marketplace offerings with our cloud partners. So if you go through the Google Marketplace, the Azure Marketplace, or the AWS Marketplace, yeah. and you are a GSI, a reseller, a VAR, a VAD, uh, you can now participate in those private offers that are getting written. So this means that the partners that our customers really rely on to do migrations, to do enablement, to do yeah. ongoing maintenance, and just even for purchasing, are now part of those transactions, part of those deals, uh, and it is a huge unblocker, I think, for them to be successful with data database app. So definitely a win for the partners. Let's talk about how is it a win for the end customer? So a lot of our customers tell us that they have trusted partners who are their primary vehicles for either purchase or right. for deployment and operations of their cloud assets. And so for them, if we don't have it, they simply can't take advantage of the product, right? We want to see those customers be successful moving those databases into the cloud of their choice, right. leveraging the data typically right. the most important data in their company inside of those databases so that they can plug into new AI pipelines, right. you know, plug into Bedrock, plug into Vertex, you know, make that data do more work for you in the AI hour. To do that, they're using partners and we've got to enable them to be part of that transaction too. At your, uh, at your event, I think it was uh, yesterday, um, or, or maybe sometime this week, yeah. uh, did you talk about any KPIs or goals uh, mm -hmm. when you rolled this out? Um, so for us, it really is about seeing more customers succeed in growth and uh, direction and, and uh, uh, see that kind of partner ecosystem start to deliver uh, on customers actually increasing usage, increasing success rates. Um, you know, I don't have a hard number to give you there, yeah. but I think we're looking for that growth rate. To yeah, increase. just yeah. what you said on stage or, yeah. or, or what was said, I, I, I understand. Um, so you have your partner summit Okay, I'm curious, and I, I think the watchers and listeners would be curious about what kind of feedback are you getting? And you know, I really want to yeah. hear a, a a combination of you know, this is what what they liked. Yeah. This is this is something that was like, huh? Okay, hey, thank you for the feedback. Yeah, and and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Uh, Talk to me. Yeah, so I think uh, obviously the general reaction that that announcement was positive. Right? right. People were very excited to be able to participate. I had a couple of conversations with uh, smaller uh, GSIs or smaller SIs uh, who were surprised that this was something they could take advantage of. They said, oh, is this just oh, Accenture, just Deloitte? You know, no, it's for everybody who can be a uh, part of that, right? It's part of the kind of, uh, I think, uh, power of those marketplaces is that's become the default fulfillment mechanism. And right. so it's really nice for everybody to be able to participate. Um, there are nuances. People have lots of detailed questions trying to think about flow and edge cases. And so we'll sort through those as we hear them. Uh, but I think we're going to be pretty unblocked. Yeah, and it seems like uh, particularly the smaller ones who didn't maybe didn't know or weren't participating in what I like to call the AI trade. Yeah. You're actually mm. bringing them into the fold where it's not just the largest partners yeah. who can do transformations because yes. you know there's there's you have to modernize uh, before you get to the AI yeah. and um, it seems like they would want to participate this as well, and they may there maybe could have been some anxiety around that. Yeah, I think that's entirely true. We, you know, we're also seeing that they are uh, surprised that they can now participate across all of our uh, CSP partners. Uh, so that is, uh, some of these folks are a little bit more specialized into individual ones, but now their customers are saying, hey, I need database inside of my all three of these, as you say, 2.8. Uh, and so right. that is a, an unblocker for them as well, for their growth. Yeah, so it's hard to believe that in such a short period of time, you started off with a CSP announcement yeah. to, I'll call it a, an alpha and beta mm -hmm. uh, program to general availability, and then adding two more yeah. of the largest global uh, CSPs. Uh, you've expanded your partner yeah. presence. Mm -hmm. You've made it easier for your end customers to consume 
all of those credits yeah. where they want to, which is, is very uh, customer centric. What are you going to be focused on for the next yeah. 12 months? I'm not asking yeah. you to pre-announce anything, mm -hmm. but if you'd like to, you can <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> on the platform. Yeah. But uh, what, what are you going to be, what's yeah. your focus? A few different areas. One, you already mentioned, right? We're at 38 regions. We're growing to 72. Uh, you know, we're putting physical servers and data centers, as you called out. There's real work behind that. And our partners are great. They're really helping us do that and investing and making that happen to meet the customer needs. That's pretty important. Um, expanding the database set. So we've uh, kind of continually had a drumbeat of net new databases in regions with CSPs. So uh, across BaseDB, uh, across Autonomous Database, across Exadata, across Exascale. So you'll see that continue to happen apace. Right. And then I think you're going to see us focus on some other interesting integrations, uh, particularly on the AI side. Uh, we think there's real opportunity there to make sure that those partners that we built, you know, so that Google, so that uh, AWS, so that Azure feel like they're getting integration value out of customers plugging in through the uh, vector embedding capability and hybrid right. search capability for uh, the database with 26 AI. The other thing I'll say that's kind of exciting is you start to see the relationships pay off in a different way where we see things like uh, Gemini 2.5 is now showing up instead of OCI Gen AI, <laughs> right? So it's coming the other direction. Right. Those relationships, now that we start to have them, turn multi-cloud from a concept into a reality. Yeah, and the whole notion of sovereign cloud gets super interesting yeah. um, a, as well here. So, uh, Nathan, any final words for your customers, mm -hmm. uh, for, your, for your partners out there that maybe we didn't cover, or maybe you want to put an exclamation point on? Yes. Well, I'll just simply say we're ready to go. You know, I think we've got customers scaling up today. We talked about some of the revenue growth we saw in the fiscal, uh, you know, over 1,500%. You know, we're seeing a significant inbound demand. We're seeing real success, customers going to production now. So I think it's the time. Excellent. Nathan, thank you so much for your time and hopefully we can have you back on the show, I don't know, in a year to see, to see where yes. we are uh, on this map. I'm very excited about that. Excellent, thank Thanks. you. This is Patrick Moorhead with the 6.5 here at Oracle AI World 2025 in Las Vegas, talking about my two favorite topics here, AI and multi-cloud, you got a two for today. Check out all of our Oracle content out there and also check out all of our multi-cloud content out there as well. Thank you very much. Hit that subscribe button. Take care.